I'm Jeremy Bodyford. And I'm Allison Tankersley. Thank you for joining us for WHN News Hour at 4. In national news, this past week, Pepsi Cola released an ad starring Kendall Jenner. The ad was not received well by audiences across the world and was criticized for making light of serious current day issues. On Wednesday the 5th, the ad was removed from PepsiCo's YouTube page, and the company released a statement saying that they did not set out to offend or make light of any issues. They also apologized to Jenner for the position that the ad placed her in. Also this past week, it was announced that the owners of Krispy Kreme Donuts have made an offer to purchase the soup and sandwich giant Panera Bread for an astounding $7.5 billion. Speaking of donuts, Allison, our very own Aubriana Hall was able to get an exclusive interview with the Twisted Chopstick. That's right, Jeremy. Aubriana met with the owners of the Twisted Chopstick right here in downtown Deland. Let's take a look. I'm Aubriana Hall, and I'm here with Jeff Curtis, the owner of the new Twisted Chopstick. So, Jeff, what gave you the inspiration to open the Twisted Chopstick? The inspiration to open it was that I've been a chef for 10 years. I didn't like working for other people, so I started my own business. That's pretty much it. So why sushi? Any particular reason? Um, I love food and I like the artwork that sushi provides. And I like the reaction that people get when I serve them sushi. Okay, so why did you choose the land? I chose the land because of what everyone provides here. I love the atmosphere. Like It's like an indie town kind of thing. Um, that's perfect. So, are you from this area or where are you originally from? The Philippines. Oh wow. <laughs> so I came here when I was about eight and my family has been living in the land since. Okay. Since, so. That's really awesome. Um, so what has been the most popular item on the menu since opening? The sushi donut. Really? Even though it's not on the menu. Uh, word of mouth just Word of mouth, around. yeah. It's like the secret menu item. Mm -hmm. So everyone tries to order it. Uh, do you have plans to expand in the future and open more locations? Yeah, my next location is going to be in St. Augustine. And I want to do the same business model, the bike delivery. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really big thing. Or it could be a big thing. Yeah, so with that, um, I saw that you have a delivery option for like locals around yeah. here. Can you kind of explain that for us? Yeah, it's like um, five to seven miles. It's going to be like a $5 delivery charge. And we have a girl that's on a bike that goes around. If you're around this area, like within a mile, she'll deliver it for free. Okay. So I live about one point, I checked last night, I live 1.2 miles away. What's that going to cost me to get sushi? Nothing. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, she'll just go to you and deliver it. Cool. Well, she loves riding her bike. <laughs> that's a good job for her yeah. then. Um, which would you prefer to eat at this moment? The poke bowl or the sushi donut? The sushi donut, for sure. Why is that? because there's just a bunch of ingredients on top. Um, I mean, you can't choose your own when you do the donut. You can choose what meat you have inside. It's either snow crab or spicy tuna. And then the top, I just decorate up. Okay. So what makes your restaurant stand out amongst all the other ones in downtown Atlanta? I think it's the late nights. So we're open until 2 a.m. in the morning on Fridays and Saturdays. So you don't have to be drunk and go to Checkers or <laughs> like anywhere that's fast food, you can get sushi here. Um, and the delivery option. Yeah, that's pretty much the two things that probably makes us stand out. That's really awesome. So guys, make sure you come check out the Twisted Chopstick. Um, I'm with Jeff Curtis, and we'll toss it back to you guys in the studio. Thanks guys. It's been such a crazy weather week this week with temperatures up and down and rain here and there. I'm happy that yesterday was a gorgeous day for the potential new students to come check out our campus on Hatter Saturday. For today, we have a high of 78 and a low of about 58. We're going to see what those temperatures do uh, based upon the sun because there's no clouds in the sky today. It's beautiful out. Now, as for the beach, it's probably going to be a little breezy or probably really windy out there, but the lake and the river should be beautiful. Stay tuned for your week's weather. Thank you, Rhiannon. In local news, a local park trail was renamed in honor of former Delane Commissioner Charles Pavia. The trail runs from Earl Brown Park and ends near Victoria Park. Plans are in motion to extend the trail past Garfield Avenue and through to U.S. Highway 92. If you have ever taken a photo with the iconic Delane wings, then you truly understand the beauty that artist Erica Group is capable of. Well, she's currently working on a new mural. Group is painting an iconic dugout that will be featured at Jackie Robinson Ballpark in Daytona Beach. The mural is set to be finished before April 13th. That's the opening night for the Daytona Tortugas. Just a block to the right of Tony's Pizza is an old abandoned hotel. 
The hotel, formerly known as the Putnam Hotel, has been vacant for years but may not be much longer. Developer Tony Collins has made requests to the City of Deland to restore the building into residential living space. Collins believes that the building can be saved and is asking the city to contribute $750,000 and exempt the land from property taxes for the next 10 years. When we return from the break, Rhiannon will have your local forecasts. Jeremy, one of Florida's most traveled highways is known as I-4. As you can see behind me, this highway is used by many daily to get to and from work and home. Earlier this year, I-4 created a construction project known as I-4 Ultimate Project. I-4 Ultimate is an important project for Central Florida. The 21-mile makeover from west of Kirkman Road in Orange County to east of State Road 434 in Seminole County is transforming the region to better connect our communities, boost our economy, and improve everyone's quality of life. I-4 Mobility will construct four toll lanes down the middle of the highway, as well as add other improvements in a project that is supposed to be completed by March 2021. In summer of 2017, drivers will begin to see the most traffic and congestion in the major areas that the project will be taking place. Additionally, there are alternative roads that can be taken during this project. These include Highway 1792. It roughly parallels I-4 and goes from Sanford into Orange at State Road 50. Northeast of downtown and State Road 417, which toll road runs from Sanford all the way to just south of Orlando International Airport. The project has already begun with nightly closures including most populated and congested areas such as downtown and by the theme parks. I-4 Ultimate Project can take years before it is completed. Reporting live, Daniela Hankey, WHNN. Back to you in the studio. Thanks guys. Now for the rest of the week. We have temperatures in the upper 70s, which is going to stay pretty constant throughout the week. Uh, it's been really hard to predict this weather because we're transferring from an El Nino year into a La Nina year. So this time period in between is a little crazy. We see the tornado outbreaks up north and then we have uh, some wildfires spreading. We, they were just around I-4 this past week. But for the rest of our week here on the Deland campus, we're going to see 79 highs stay pretty constant. And our lows are going to be in the upper 60s, upper 50s. Um, so stay tuned for the weather to find out more. Thanks, Rhiannon. This coming Wednesday, the ladies of STEM will present the movie Hidden Figures, free of charge to all Stetson students and faculty. The event will be taking place from 8 p.m. until 10.30 p.m. Stick around after the movie for a discussion. Cultural credit is available for this event. On Saturday, the African Studies program will be hosting the Made in Africa Night Event. This event is a night of cultural display of Africans variety in dance, music, art, and much more. The event is taking place from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. and you will receive cultural credit for attending. And Hatters, make sure you come out to support your baseball team this week as they will be playing University of South Florida on Tuesday and Kennesaw State on Friday night and again on Saturday afternoon. And now we'll toss it over to DJ and Abriano with sports. The Stetson baseball team played NGIT last weekend, and it went as well as could have been expected as they completed a sweep to start off conference play 3-0. The tone for the weekend was set Friday night as Stetson won 13-2 behind eight dominant innings by Brooks Wilson, who finished his appearance with 13 strikeouts, pushing his season total to 72, which is tied with Citadel pitcher J.P. Sears for second in the nation four strikeouts behind projected first-round pick Seth Romero. On the offensive side, seven Hatters had multi-hit games led by Jorge Arenas who finished 4-4 four four with a home run. While the offense was not as productive on Saturday and Sunday, both games were ended... Oh, fuck, shit. Okay, we only have to set the yep. that second part, though. That's it. While the offense was not as productive on Saturday and Sunday, both games ended in Stetson victories. Saturday by a score of 3-2 and Sunday ended 4-2. Both games were led by the Hatters starting pitching as Jack Perkins threw 7 innings allowing 1 run with 8 strikeouts on Saturday, which places him 14th in the nation with 59, and Logan Gilbert on Sunday who allowed 2 runs over 6 innings with 6 strikeouts. His 6 strikeouts put his total at 55 tied for 6 others with 27th in the nation. While two midweek games were scheduled this past week, only one will count towards the Hatters' record as the University of Florida refused to retake the field or reschedule Tuesday night's game after they went into the rain delay trailing 10-1 in the top of the fifth. Despite coming in as the number eight team in the nation, the Gators were beaten into submission as they refused to adequately tarp the field in an attempt that required the Stetson coaches to assist the UF grounds crew. If the fifth inning had been completed, Stetson would have received the victory. 
Their last game of the week was played Wednesday night and resulted in a 5-3 loss at UCF as Stetson's bats were silent until the 8th when they managed to get one across on a Colton Lightner home run. They scored two more in the top of the ninth on an Austin Hale home run, but it would not be enough as they fell to 13-18 on the year. The Stetson pitching staff as a whole has a strikeout per 9 of 10, which ranks 8th in the nation. So you guys, besides from UF being Bush League and quitting in the 5th inning because they were losing, what else happened this week? Well, did you see American Ninja Warriors was filming at the Daytona Speedway earlier this week? I did hear about that. That sounds very exciting. I know that you have been interested on being on that show. Yes, I wish I would have known about it earlier. I definitely would have applied, but I'd probably have to go to the gym a couple times first, hit the Hall Center. That's okay. DJ, would you do it? I'd probably fail, but I might try. Hey. <laughs> Thanks. A for effort. <laughs> exactly. Well, thank you for joining us for WHNN News Hour at 4. I am Jeremy Buddyhorn. And I'm Allison Tankersley. And I'm DJ Swarthaw. Have a great week, Hatters.